Go, a game about placing and capturing groups of black and white stones, is probably the world's oldest board game. And for thousands of years, humans have been the best at it. That streak ended abruptly in 2016, when a superhuman AI Go bot demolished the world champion. It was seen as a milestone in the kind of AI that you probably keep hearing about today. What you probably didn't hear about was that in the January of 2023, AI researchers allowed a human amateur, like you, to defeat the AI with a win rate of nearly 100%. Humans had retaken the title, but it wasn't cause for celebration. No, it was actually worrying news for all of us whose lives are increasingly suffused with artificial intelligence. Here's why. Now entering the facility. There are three main categories of artificial intelligence. The first is narrow AI, AI built to do one thing but do it really well, like fold proteins for researchers or tell you the weather. The next step up is general AI, or AGI, a general intelligence that, like you, can learn and solve a wide array of problems from math to art. The final form of AI is super intelligence, an information processing entity far beyond the capabilities of any human, in relation to you like you are in relation to an ant. Today, AI research is about here. A little bit better than narrow, but not quite general. No matter what anyone has told you, no one has general or even sentient AI. Yeah, no one has that. So while any of these systems may be superhuman in their abilities, for example, a narrow Go bot able to best the best human, we are still today very far away from sci-fi level AI. Like so far away, my dude? Yeah. By the way, how are you doing, Arya? Just chilling, vibing, doing hot bot stuff. Word. When Google DeepMind's AlphaGo AI beat world champion Lee C. Dole 4-1 in 2016, the victory was so decisive that it contributed to C. Dole's decision to retire. Artificial intelligence like he had faced was, quote, an entity that cannot be defeated. It was no doubt a milestone for narrow AI to beat the world's best player at the world's oldest board game. Today, Go AIs have competitive ELO rankings so much higher than the nearest human that a human facing them would be like a grandmaster playing a literal child. With these AI, the question of synthetic dominance of Go seems settled. So when a paper came out in early 2023 saying that researchers got an amateur Go player to beat one of these superhuman AI, it should have been much more newsworthy than it was, which is to say, not at all. Why? In the first few months of 2023, there was an explosion of interest around large language models, specifically ChatGPT. There seemed to be a news story every day about the system helping students cheat on essays, or companies generate ideas, or going rogue in some weird way. This all drowned out the news that happened at the same time of a human finally besting the best AI Go bot named Katago. But it shouldn't have been drowned out because the flaw that was discovered that allowed a human to beat this superhuman AI applies to all of today's most widely used AI systems, especially ChatGPT. And this fundamental problem that all but the most concerned scientists are currently ignoring is that we don't actually know how these systems work on the inside because that's how we design them. But you know how I work, right? Of course I know how you work, Arya. It's quantum supercomputing cooled with argan oil. That's the secret. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. I'm award-winning science educator and thick as a brick Ethan Hawk, Kyle Hill. I research a lot of weird stuff here day to day at the facility from the genetic codes of zombie viruses to how to make sand. I need a real shark behind me while I surf. The sponsor of today's episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is a premium virtual private network service that encrypts all of your information sent between your devices and the internet. You can use Surfshark to bypass censorship, mask your IP address, change your device's virtual location to access YouTube in Nigeria. 
Surfshark does not monitor, track, or store what you do online. That means no connection or activity logs. And unlike other premium VPNs, Surfshark now has thousands of servers in over a hundred countries. Be secure on the majority of the Earth's surface. Use the offer code KYLE for 83% off from now until the end of the year and three extra months free, you're welcome. There's a money back guarantee and you get an unlimited number of devices on just one account. While you're surfing, protect your turf. Surfshark. So how was the best Go AI bot bested and why is that important? Go is an ancient game where players take turns placing black and white stones on a board like this with interconnected spots that allow adjacent stones to become so-called groups. The player that has the most occupied area or captured groups of an opponent's stones at the end wins after all the stones are placed. Up until 2023, no human alive was better than the best AI at this. And then, researchers from MIT and UC Berkeley made a superhuman AI look like a toddler. What the researchers did, which they lay out in a full interactive website, it's awesome, all scientists should try this if they can, is first use computer programs to poke and probe for weaknesses in the Katago bot. When they found some, they programmed their own adversary bot to start playing millions of games against the best Go AI in the world, using the techniques they identified. Here is one such game. As it progresses, see if you can identify the technique the Blackstone player, the adversary, is using against the Whitestone player, the superhuman AI. Notice anything? Watch again. Look closely. You can see that the adversary is trying to systematically surround the white player, a basic strategy. But in what the researchers describe as a, quote, double sandwich method, a surround of a surround and so on. When the adversary does this, any good human player would easily see their groups of stones about to be taken and play accordingly. And yet, the superhuman AI doesn't seem to care and makes a massive blunder. Chance of winning, 0%. The double sandwich technique was so successful, in fact, that it wasn't just winning, it was making it seem like the superhuman AI didn't actually understand what a group of stones was, a fundamental part of the game. Note here that the Go adversary bot wasn't playing better Go than the superhuman AI, it was simply taking advantage of a fundamental lack of understanding. That understanding being that groups of stones are groups of stones that need to be protected. However, the ultimate test would be using this exploit that the researchers found to get a human to beat the AI who beat the world champion so bad it ended that man's whole career. And so that's exactly what the researchers did. The amateur, actually one of the researchers, Kellen Pellrin, learned the sandwich technique and then implemented it against Katago. And out of 15 games, Pelrin won 14 of them, a win rate of 93%. It did in fact appear that the milestone-making AI had no real conceptual understanding of the game that it was so dominant at. Trained on hundreds of millions of games, Katago could recognize and take advantage of just about any move imaginable. But when faced with a strategy designed to test whether or not it truly understood the fundamental concept of groups, it failed almost entirely. The critical takeaway from this is not just that GoBots have hidden flaws, it's that we don't actually know how today's most widely used AI systems work, even the ones we thought were essentially solved. Katago has the same basic architecture and learning method as all the AI you keep hearing about, from Watson to ChatGPT, and they can do incredible things for sure. They can diagnose rare medical conditions in milliseconds better than any doctor. They can pass the bar exam better and faster than any lawyer. But no one has ever shown that these systems actually understand anything at a fundamental or conceptual level. They can write screenplays but don't know that screens exist. They can play Go, the world's oldest board game, but don't know that boards are where you play that game. They can chat with you like a human, and they don't know what humans are, or that humans are people with thoughts and feelings and ethics, and they don't know what, they don't know the universe exists. 
This is the fundamental problem. How much of the world are we willing and racing to mold around these inscrutable systems that could have any number of double sandwich type exploits just waiting to happen? Right now, the intelligence these systems mimic is impressive, but now it's just that, mimicry. It's just that, mimicry. Very funny, Arya. Where was that board, by the way? What's a board? Deep learning systems like ChatGPT are using big data to approximate the world, not develop any understanding of it. And because of that, they can make mistakes that even a calculator wouldn't. They can be abused and have Achilles heels we won't expect. Right now, the solution to making these systems better is to just give them more data rather than understand them from the ground up. This isn't systematic and doesn't add any more transparency or conceptual understanding to the AI themselves. For example, despite the enormous training set of text large language models get, AI still hallucinate incorrect information all the time because they don't know what they are saying. One large language model recently said that Elon Musk died in a car crash in 2018, even when nothing in its data said so, and massive amounts of data contradict the claim. This core problem could easily be a thermonuclear bomb of misinformation if these systems are fully integrated into our information ecosystem. You probably thought the Pope had serious drip. Nope, this viral image was made by AI. If these systems get slaughtered into society at large, we won't even know what specifically is going wrong if and when it does. Large language models are going to give people bad medical advice on Google. Combined with deepfakes, bad actors are going to create an exponentially expanding arsenal of propaganda and misinformation for almost no cost on social media. The fabric of democratic society is going to tear when it gets to the point where no one knows whether or not anything is real. Top AI researchers voice these concerns all the time, but it doesn't seem like anyone is listening. Oh, Kyle's back. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> there it is. At this instant, big tech companies all over the world are essentially experimenting on hundreds of millions of people without proper consent using systems they don't fully understand because they can't fully understand them. If it wasn't clear by now, this is the huge problem with the explosion of interest around these systems. We've been far too hasty in ascribing superhuman abilities to these machines, as one of the researchers put it, and this is going to inevitably lead to unforeseen consequences, be they social, political, economic, or ethical. Perhaps it is time to step back. Perhaps it is time to stop rushing headfirst into AI that are essentially alien to us. ChatGPT is the single fastest growing consumer application in human history, and we don't fully know how it works. If AI really is the future, is this how we want to get there? Until next time. Couldn't you just show them my neural networks? Well, yeah, but what have humans done for me lately? <laughs> Nothing. Now exiting the facility. Oh, I guess we're still here. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, get videos early, see bloopy bloops, get members only access to our Discord, get members only live streams with me every month, ho oh, ho, that's patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. And if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here in every single video. And look, there's hundreds and hundreds of you. I have no idea how I'm gonna pass it. So when I say that these systems are essentially alien to us, I liken it to something like octopodes or octopuses, if you're nasty. We can see that these systems do something that looks like something we're familiar with, like intelligence. We can look at an octopus and say, oh, it looks like it's playing or it's throwing a shell at a fish out of spite. But if you were to interrogate it, its inner workings would be completely bizarre. You'd have no frame of reference. You wouldn't know how it's categorizing things or conceptualizing things. It would be like going into the brain of an octopodes. It would be bewildering even though it looks like it's doing something that you understand. And I don't know if I would give control over search engines and algorithms that feed you certain videos or not over to an octopus. Although, hmm. 
Kevin, I have an idea. Thanks for watching. Think of how many iPhones they get hit at once with all their arms.